Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the new things that are in Lightroom Classic 11.4. Hey folks, we are here with a classic 11.4. There's got some interesting stuff and stuff that I've really wanted. And um, so I'm delighted to uh, talk about some of them. So let's just go straight into it. So here I have a couple of similar images that we can use a mask on. So the first thing is about masking. So I'm going to jump into develop, D for develop. D for develop and then click mask. And I'm going to go select subject. Now we've only one image uh, selected at the moment. So it's selected our subject and we are going to go in and we are going to do an intersect. So hold down the option or alt key and click on intersect, intersect with the color range. Now the hair is very close to the skin color here, so it's not going to be as accurate as it would be on some things. I'm just going to grab this area here. We can see it's reduced it down a little bit. So it's taken it off the eyes and the teeth a little bit and the lips. So that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm just taking a look at the film strip and I'm going to go command or control A. So that's now selected everything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go sync. And we're only going to select our masks. All right, so it's going to sync the mask across. All right. Synchronize. Now we haven't done anything with the mask itself. We're only synchronizing the mask. You can see here your settings are synced, but updating AI masks will take some time. So what's happening here is that before you would have to manually update everything. And now it is updating everything in real time. So you can stop this. So we click stop. Okay. And let me jump down, say to the end one here. And so now it's going to say some masks are missing and need to be updated. So you can just update all and then it will update the masks in the images that are selected. So that is absolutely fantastic. And it is one of the things I've wanted for ages. So it means that Let's say we come in here and we go and we apply our softened skin. Okay, and if we, uh, I should have done that with auto sync on. So let me just change it to softened skin and then softened skin light. And we can see that the local adjustment gets updated for the masks as well. So they all have our skin softening applied. So this is great for faster, basic portrait retouches, which is brilliant. Okay, so. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in really quickly here. And I'm just going to grab, say, like a grade. So this is, um, this is a, a preset that I created for one of the magazines I write for. Okay, but now we have this new thing here. We can see here is we have an amount slider, which is built in. Now I was using a, something called Opal to do this, but now it's built into Lightroom itself. Okay, so you can basically fade a preset as part of Lightroom directly, which is amazing. Okay. And um, just in terms of masks as well, there's other things that you can do as well. And um, you can invert, uh, like invert duplicate some of the stuff that was here before, but you can duplicate and invert mask at the same time. All right. So that way, let's say you had a situation where you wanted to do something to a sky. Well, let, let, let's hear for example here, right? So we have this mask here. Okay. And um, uh, let's do it just as a subject mask. So let's create a new subject mask. And um, right, just so that it's the subject. So let's say uh, this is because I've them all selected, which I really shouldn't for this. And um, we we'll skip that for a second. And so we new subject mask here. So what I can do is let's say I wanted to say lighten the subject a small bit, or let's say let's say we want to darken the subject slightly, just a small bit. We want to darken the background even more. So what we can do here at mask two is we can click here and go duplicate and invert mask. So we now have the actual background selected. Let's say we want to darken that even more. So we could quite easily do that. So it's just a one click thing, which is really, really good. Now there's a couple of other things that are going on in the background. It's like preview management. And um, so everything that you see when you're inside, uh, so we just go to the grid here, for example. So we're going to see that like previews are being created here uh, as we go, but there's now better preview management. So when previews haven't been used for ages or Let's say you've deleted stuff. Sometimes you get orphan files. So there's now better, um, there's better handling and management of that. So it gets rid of inactive and uh, obsolete previews. Uh, the, the benefit of this is that previews take up space on your disk and get, getting rid of obsolete ones means that you have more space on your disk. Now, one thing that I can't show you properly because of this machine here 
it's because of the fact that this is this is a low uh, RAM GPU. It's only or it's only like two two gigs. Um, we can actually have a look at that in our preferences, and we can see in our performance. So we can see here that's only two gigabyte. So um, there's certain stuff that it'll do, um, but like so it kind of limits it. But now what what this is about is the fact that if you've eight gigabytes or more, or you've got shared memory that has eight gigabytes or more, and um, when you go to export. Export will now use the GPU. So when you go to actually export, your export will use the GPU as well, which will make for faster exports. Uh, another thing that's going on here as well is we have an information tab. So if you press I, it brings up information. Okay, but if you go to develop, and you bring up I, uh, it's going to be the same information, basically. But now you can in Info, loop info. Okay. And um, so view options. Info one and info two. And so here we can have, let's say we have file name. Okay, file name and copy name. And now we go to uh, E, press I again. So we can see that it's different sets of information that can be set individually inside of develop or inside of library. All right, if we go to our crop tool, we can now cycle through these pressing O. So we can see that we have all the standard stuff that we're used to seeing. But there is now this one here, which is the overlay of fifths. So it's an alternative composition uh, technique that you can use. Of course, there's also things like uh, premium presets that have been added to it. Um, so in, in the factory uh, presets. Um, so this is some of the stuff that's inside here as the premium presets. And there is also adaptive presets. So you got one click edits to the sky or subject using AI. So folks, that's the new stuff there. The one I'm obviously most excited about is the automatic updating of AI masks. It's brilliant. It just for specific stuff where you're editing a bunch of images and you're doing a similar edit to all of them, it is just such a time saver. Uh, before, you'd have to go in and manually do each individual image, which was ridiculously time consuming. The fact that it will do all, all of them or that if you do stop because you want to do it at a later time, you're still able to update all of them as well, which is fantastic. Uh, the GPU export will be much more exciting for me at another stage when I update the machine, which I am planning on doing fairly shortly. Um, this is a 20, well, 2015. Late, late 2015 iMac that I'm using here. And yes, it's kind of old. It's at that seven year stage kind of where it's like, I got I actually got into uh, 2016. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's time. So folks, hopefully enjoyed that. If you did give it a like and um, pass it on to your friends, if you think they might be interested as well. And um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already on all that kind of stuff. And here's another video that you might want to watch as well. Thanks for watching.